Tristan mentioned, I am James Tacker. I am a technical con content producer. So I'm living proof that you can learn this stuff. And if you get excited about it, you'll go very far in your automated testing journey. OK, so before you actually write your test, we've created a browser. We've opened the browser. Now what, right? Um, so what do we need to do? We need to find an application to work with. And we need to actually find how we're going to locate and identify things to interact with on the page. And what we call that in Selenium lingo is elements, right? We're basically using uh, locators to locate elements on the page or application view and then interact with them. Um, so because we're using a, a, a web application, we're going to be talking about HTML today, primarily. So the HTML document object model, which is what HTML DOM stands for. And the elements that are on the page could be anything. Could be a contact form, could be an image, could be a link, et cetera, et cetera. And the way you identify those objects are, there's a couple of ways. These are probably the, from order of fastest, quote unquote fastest to slowest. Um, you have your IDs. So sometimes developers do this cool thing where they actually assign IDs to elements, which is really good for you as an automation engineer. Or you could use the class names if it has one in the document object model. Uh, or if uh, it's, you know, if it doesn't have either and you need to be kind of creative with locating your elements, you can use one of the bottom two strategies, which is the CSS or XPath locator. Now, oops, sorry, I jumped around. So CSS is exactly what it sounds like. You're using attributes of the element to actually locate it. So maybe the attribute has a type attribute. Maybe it is a div element. Maybe it is a paragraph element. Um, and the more specific you are with that locator, it, the better your test will run. XPath is, is, is actually, the, if you think about the document object model, XPath is actually nodes. So every element has a node on the document. The XPath is its exact position in the node, right? So it's kind of like saying, you know, if there's 10,000 lines in the document and this, this element exists on line blah, 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 you're telling it to go to that line to interact with that specific element. So as you can imagine, that's very, very, very scary, like if something were to change in your application, because nodes probably move all the time, right, when you're like changing the application. So that's why we recommend it as the last ditch effort to find an element. If you're having a hard problem and you need to find an element really quickly, sure, use an XPath. But just know that if the application changes, your test will more than likely break. So uh, how do we find elements on an app that already exists? So the first thing I'm going to do is open up our Sauce demo app. Any questions about locators? No? Yes? OK. So here's our application. Um, this is the splash page, basically, of the application. And let's say we wanted to write a test for a login feature. What are the elements do you think we would need to identify before we do that? Any, any, just shout them out. Username, password, what else? Button? Login button, right? Those are probably all you would need. So we have two contact forms here. <laughs> My browser stored the information. So we have a username contact form, password contact form, and then a button. How many of you have ever used uh, dev tools from your browser before, just poking around for fun? I'm sure manual testers you have a lot, very often. So that's exactly what we're going to do, right? Every browser is different, whether it's Safari, Firefox, or Chrome. Uh, in Chrome, you can easily locate an element by right-clicking it and then choosing Inspect. And it will actually open the DevTools for you. So right away, it's highlighted the, where the position of, the, of that element is in the actual HTML document. So if we go to the right here, and I'll try to make this a little bigger so you can see. We can see that it's an input type. Um, and it has a class name called Form Input. And it actually has, I'm actually supposed to be highlighting the username. Okay, and it has a data test attribute that's called username. It has an ID called user dash name, which can be confusing. It also has a placeholder attribute called username with an uppercase uh, U. Okay, and you notice when I, when I type something in there, it changes the DOM, it actually adds the, the value of what I put in there. But obviously that's not gonna help you for your test because you can't interact with an element before you find it. Um, so what you're going to want to do is choose any one of these attributes to locate the element. Luckily, we have an ID, so we're going to use that, right? Same thing with password. So when I go to the password element, which is right below it, it has an ID of a password. Now, the problem is with the login button. So when we inspect the login button, it has a class, but that seems like a very generic class name, right? Button underscore action. Uh, I bet when we get to other pages, there's going to be other buttons called button dash action, right? 
And it also has a value of lag login, so that helps. So what do you think we should do here? Should we use a CSS locator that goes to that value attribute? That's probably what we should do. Or we can, what's, what's that? Or we could use XPath um, based on the position of the node in the document. Someone said something? Value attribute, right? So those are the two options, XPath, value attribute. So what we're going to do is actually use a value attribute so I can show you how to use the dev console in Chrome tools. So down here, right here, underneath where it says styles, and this is a really cool tip for if you need to write your locators and you're not sure how to do it. Um, when you want to test your locators before you actually put them in a script, I recommend doing it here. So how do you do that? Let's go back to the slides. So for CSS, it's going to be dollar, oop, dollar sign, dollar sign. And then whatever's in parentheses is going to be your locating strategy. So for CSS, and I'm not going to get too deep into CSS locators because it's kind of out of scope for today's class. But I definitely recommend, if you're a nerd like me, Googling CSS locators and you'll see some hardcore locating strategies. Uh, but this is a basic class locator because we're using the um, username, which is indicated by the hash symbol there. If it was an ID, it would be, I believe, a dot. No, no, sorry, I have that backwards. I think hash is ID and dot is class. Yes, thank you, Enrique. <laughs> he was about to correct me. Did you see his face? He was like, uh. <laughs> anyway, uh, so for XPath, it's very similar. Um, you need dollar sign X, and then whatever is in your parentheses, that would be your XPath string that you would use. Um, the username, in my opinion, looks a little bit sexier, so we're going to stick with that one. But because we have an ID for the username object, this is kind of a little unnecessary. We can just use the username ID. But for the value attribute or the type attribute for what we're about to do is going to be a little different. So let's go back to the dev, dev tools. And I'm sorry, I'm just checking for time here. We're going on time, right? Don't worry, you know, I'm always checking on the time. OK, good. How are we doing, by the way? Y'all feeling good? Feeling OK? Getting help from the TAs, we're all right? Yeah. OK. Good. OK, um, so what we're going to do here is I'm, question? Someone had a question? No? OK. So we're actually going to um, either do one of two things. We're going to take the value attribute or the type attribute. Um, I'm actually going to do the type attribute because it's a specific to a submit button. So the way we would create our locator, and if you can't see it, I'll try to make it a little bigger. Okay, so we're going to do dollar sign, dollar sign. And right away, it's giving us some options here, right? Um, so if we wanted to test to make sure our console's working correctly, we can do an easy one for a username. You click username, hit enter, and it's going to take you to where it is in the DOM, right? So let's go ahead and do a different one. Let's do dollar sign, dollar sign, parenthesis, colon, value equals, and remember login was in, I believe it was in all caps, right? Yeah, it is in all caps, so it is a little case sensitive. Wow, is there a party going on there or what? Cancel. Um, now because we're using an attribute selector, we should actually enclose it in brackets before we finish this. And right away, let me move this up a little bit. I think I can, right? <laughs> no. There we go. So right away when I hit enter, it immediately identified that there is a button with a value of login. Um, so this actually means that this selector, whatever's in this parentheses, is going to work in our script. And that's what we're going to use for our CSS selector. Okay? So you don't need to actually do this exercise. I just wanted to illustrate that it is really a good tool to test your selectors in the, in the Chrome tools or the Safari tools or whatever before you actually decide to write your script. So let's remember this value for when we write our script. 